familiar. One Republican who has changed his position on guns is Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He joins us now. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, let, let me uh, just ask you straight up. We, we heard from Senator Murphy uh, that, that he thinks that something different may be happening this time, that he has had far more encouraging conversations with Republicans now than even after uh, Newtown. W what's your sense? I mean, you're obviously willing to deal on this, but, but do you think that something will get done? It does seem that way. I mean, it's it's uh, first off, I want to commend Chris for for one specific thing. I've known him since he served in the House. Um, it is easy in this business to start throwing out things that Republicans aren't going to do and just make it a campaign issue for November. I think he is really um, and it doesn't mean it's not going to continue to be a campaign issue, but he is really focusing on what can I actually do at this moment. He gets a lot of credit for that. that that's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to do. So I, I do think we're on the track to maybe getting something. It's not, look, I mean, the reality is I actually think that raising, if we can't get it done, Chris is right not to focus on it now. But I think that raising the age of gun purchase to 21 is a no-brainer. If you look at uh, the Parkland shooting, you look at Buffalo, you look at this shooting, these are people under the age of 21. We know that the, the human brain develops and matures a lot between the age of 18 and 21. We just raised, without really so much as a blink, the age of purchasing cigarettes federally to 21. Uh, I think we need to get there eventually, but I commend Chris on focusing what is possible now. That's important. I, I mean, that, the issue of raising the AIDS, uh, I mean, it is, it is remarkable to look back at all of these shootings and see how many of them are done by individuals, men, young men, 18 to 21. I mean, even Newtown. Now, Newtown, the shooter was 20. His mother actually got him the gun. But, but many of them are bought legally as 18, 19, or 20-year-olds. But, but uh, let, let me ask you about your journey on this. Because you, you were once an A rating uh, from the NRA. Uh, you owned an AR-15. Do you still own an AR-15? I do, yep. So... So help, help me understand, how did you, how did you go uh, from being somebody that was kind of, you know, right in line with, with, with the gun lobby on this to somebody uh, who, who thinks it's time to change these laws? Look, it's a, it's a journey of, you know, getting sick of seeing the mass shootings. You know, being a strong, look, I'm, I'm a strong defender of the Second Amendment. And, and one of the things I believe that for some reason is a very rare thing is that as a person that appreciates and, and believes in the Second Amendment, we have to be the ones putting forward reasonable solutions to gun violence. You know, the, the reaction of my colleagues of the NRA to say, hey, if you want to come and take my gun, so I'm going to walk around, I'm going to go into the Michigan State Capitol with my AR because I can. By the way, can I make a point that open carry especially with ARs, is one of the more insane things. Uh, maybe out west it works fine. I'm not going to go after it there. But to walk into the state capital of Michigan with a gun because it makes you feel tough, uh, these are the kinds of things that Second Amendment supporters are doing no favors to defend that Second Amendment the next generation. So for me, I woke up the morning after Vegas, the Vegas shooting. I had shot a bump stock before. I heard the audio from that shooting. I knew that was a bump stock. And I called for banning bump stocks, which, by the way, was ultimately done. And because of that, the NRA basically said Kinzinger is a rhino or whatever their language was. And I realized, especially then, the only thing the NRA cares about is raising money on your back. They don't really give a lot of money to people. They can get people upset. And they're competing with another group called Gun Owners of America. You think the NRA is crazy. Look at the Gun Owners of America. These are the ones that believe there should be zero restrictions on owning guns. And now NRA has to compete with this group for crazy because that's where they get their money from. The NRA has become, it's gone from defending rights of gun owners. It has become a grifting scam. And all you have to do is look at the last few years of the grifting scam of the NRA to know that that's true. Yeah, the Gun Owners of America, I, I remember covering them after uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. They're outright in support of militia movement in, in, in the country. Uh, but, but the NRA itself is, you know, has had huge issues with its budget, internal scandals, uh, is not the force it once was, but, but does seem, the issue seems to still have a hold on Republicans. I mean, as much as ever, well, no? Well, I, I think... Yeah, I, look, I think the right to keep and bear arms is important to Republicans. It is to me, too. But for some reason, we've got locked in this position of 
what are things where we can make a difference? You were, you were mentioning earlier Florida raising the age of, of buying guns to 21, uh, the red flag laws. This is Florida, right? This is Rick Scott. This is, you know, Ron DeSantis' state. Uh, there was no blowback. Like, let's do that kind of stuff now. Because, look, we, yes, it's ultimately it's a mental health issue. Somebody has to make a decision to pull a trigger. But can an 18-year-old buy an assault rifle the day of his birthday with hundreds of rounds of ammunition, then buy a second one, make it clear he wants to shoot up an elementary school, and still kill 20-some people with 150 cops standing around? Obviously, yes. So what are the things we can do to stop and mitigate that? This is, Jonathan, you know, you, you know as well as I do, I, I talk to people overseas all the time, you know, in my job. This is embarrassing. They look at the United States and say, what's going on? Like, we can have this rich tradition of, of kind of individualism and gun rights. You know, I'm, I'm a big staunch advocate of concealed carry if you're trained and you know what you're doing. But this kind of Wild West, I'm going to carry a gun around because it looks cool, uh, come and take the gun out of my cold, dead hands kind of attitude. Um, first off, you're not really doing anything to defend your rights with the next generation. Secondly, you're just you're, you're playing tough camp out there while real people and innocent people are dying. So, so just before you go, uh, the AR-15, which, as you said, you, you, you own an AR-15. Uh, Las Vegas, it was an AR-15. The Pulse nightclub, Sandy Hook, Uvalde. So many of these are with that weapon. What, what do you say to Chris Murphy who says that the, the AR-15 should be banned? Straight up banned. What, why do you still have one? I, I say that I'd love to get in a conversation with him about it in a good way because I'll tell you where I've come on this. Uh, I, I think we need to have this real discussion, and I don't mean that as politicians say so they can kick to the next question. I think if there's a way to maybe when it comes to ARs, you know, is there a special license you need to own one? Um, are there ways that we can ensure that those that own them are the ones, look, again, we all have to admit and know 99.9% .9 of AR owners aren't walking in and having mass shootings. Is there a way to differentiate and, and make a distinction there? Okay. Um, I'm definitely ready to engage in that conversation. And maybe that ultimately includes not selling them anymore. That's fine. Because to me, again, uh, I'm focused on saving life now. Um, at the same time, what's the first thing we can do that I think will mitigate this problem? Let's raise the age to 21. And I think look at the AR discussion as uh, kind of the short and near and far and also far-term target. Right I, now, this is insane, and there's things we can do to stop it. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, and let me also say, uh, I know you're an Iraq War veteran, member of the Air National Guard. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, uh, thank you for joining us on this, on this Memorial Day weekend. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. You bet. Thank